Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at these M Audio studio monitors. And these are on loan to me from a fellow YouTuber, Hive Park, link down in the description. And they have a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these in and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna bring the microphone a little closer. So I, you can definitely hear that. It's pretty audible. These speakers are buzzing right now. So what we're gonna do is figure out what's wrong with them basically. Um, open them up, see what the problem is, and hopefully do a repair on these. So we got the M audio monitor opened up and uh, this construction is definitely hard to work on. I can see inside the box, we got a bunch of wires that run through. These ones are soldered, but they don't, there's no connector anywhere to actually remove them. So it's, it is what it is. We're just stuck with what we got. So we're going to have to work within this envelope that's here, but we do see something right away that would indicate why we're getting hum basically. So you can see these capacitors have some orange in the middle and that indicates that they have leaked. And they also, if we get them in a different profile, you can see they actually have quite a bit of a dome to them. So they've gotten hot and they've leaked. We can see that these capacitors are a kind of unknown brand. I'm not actually even sure how to pronounce that, but they do say 105 degrees C on them. So they should be capable of the higher temperature. We also see over here, we have a lower voltage capacitor. That one also has a dome on it. so. Doesn't look like it's actually leaked yet, but I bet you this capacitor isn't any good either. So these two big capacitors, which are the main filter capacitors, will likely get rid of the hum. This one over here looks like it's a future problem, so it should also be replaced. In reality, probably a lot of the capacitors should be replaced, but at that point it becomes a beyond economy of repair issue because we'd have to desolder every single wire from this board. This port is actually in the way. Um, we wouldn't actually be able to get to money the components on this board. But instead of that, we're going to save this thing. We're going to replace the capacitors that we can replace and make it work again. This amplifier is a class AB type amplifier. It's hard to see it, but there's a big heat sink down here. This heat sink is doing the main work of cooling the amplifier chip, which is hidden back inside there. And it's a TDA, some kind of package. So it does have a clunking power switch back here, which isolates it from the mains. That comes in. There's a fuse that goes to a main transformer. So if you leave the power switch on on this unit, the transformer will always be powered. And you can see that we have two red wires and a black wire coming out of the transformer. So this is telling us that we have a positive and a negative voltage rail essentially. So one of the things we see with this monitor speaker is the heat sink is down at the bottom. And then there's another piece of metal here. It's just a little shield. So the heat is gonna rise through this board. So these capacitors are placed at the top. So they are gonna see some heat. Now this not being a switching converter, I wouldn't expect these to be under too much abuse. So the reason why these leaked is a little bit unknown to me. These should last a very long time. So these monitor speakers saw some decent amount of on time. And because of that, these capacitors are always in circuit and they're always trying to smooth out that uh, AC waveform and turn it into the DC that our power amplifier needs. So these do get some abuse and because they're on all the time, they're continuously trying to, to do that work. So. Over time, these lesser quality components do get closer and closer to failure. And in this case, they have actually failed. So we will do some tests on these to see what kind of ratings we get with them. Uh, in this case, the failure mode is not necessarily from heat, it's just from being on. Um, these products should be capable of being on for a very long period of time, but uh, you know, nothing lasts forever. So one thing, just from an e-waste perspective, you have these couple of small parts right here that have actually failed. And you have this whole other box, which is just fine. You have a transformer, it's not gonna fail. You have your heatsink and amplifier and everything else is working great inside this product. It's just these two little pieces that have failed. So if we can replace these two little pieces, we save a whole lot of e-waste. So our goal is definitely to replace these components and get this thing working again. So from a repairability standpoint, the manufacturer did something that's pretty annoying on this one. They bent these capacitor leads over before they soldered them. 
So that's going to make it very difficult to get these out. So we can't just pull the solder out and then pop in a new capacitor. We're going to have to cut something or bend something or break these capacitors out of the unit. All right, got the replacement capacitors here. Genuine Nichicons, 1800 microfarad, 50 volts. So the failure mode we saw in those M Audio Studio monitors was the electrolyte had leaked out. So these capacitors are rated at 105 degrees C. So that means they can tolerate the higher temperatures for a longer period of time. Alright, so when I opened up the loudspeaker, the first thing I saw was these domed capacitors. And I also saw in the end there's a little bit of a spot. That's a really bad sign. You can see we got 446 microfarads and 2 ohms of ESR. So these capacitors are an order of magnitude worse than what they're supposed to be. Alright, so this one measured 520 microfarads, so it's in a little better condition. And the ESR came in at 1.8 ohms. And ESR is equivalent series resistance. So you see the little symbol here with the capacitor. Imagine there's a little resistor next to that. So every time this capacitor gets charged and discharged, that little resistor is going to make a little bit of heat. The higher that number is, the basically the worse performance you're going to get out of the capacitor. All right, so I went ahead and hooked up one of the new capacitors here, and let's see what it gets for specs. So we can see it's about 1,800 microfarads, which is smaller than the original ones, but good enough and the V loss is much lower, and our ESR is only 0.35 ohms. All right, so we're back, and the speakers are hooked up. I'm gonna turn the volume up. There's a little bit of hiss there, but there's no buzz. So I'm gonna take the mic and put it up to the speaker right now so you can hear it. So that little bit of hiss that you're hearing is actually being fed in by me. So I had to have the, the signal generators actually on a little bit, but it's just at a really low level. So I am introducing that. All right, let's go ahead and put it to sine wave and let's give these things a test and see if we hear some of those weird effects we were hearing before. One of the things that was happening when we were on the 60 hertz mode before is we heard a weird kind of phasing effect as the 60 hertz was interfering with the 60 hertz from the signal generator. Now it's just a nice tone. We're going to call that a success. The speakers are working again. All right, so a new pair of these speakers is about $100. And so for the cost of just two capacitors and a little bit of time, we were able to bring these things back to life. And now they can go on, save them from the landfill. So we're saving some waste. And they're just another pair of speakers that you can use and keep using for a long period of time. So this little tester I used to check the capacitors was featured in another video of mine, so if you want to check that out, the link's down in the description. So it seems like this is the failure mode for lots of these devices. This is the another amplifier video that I did that was a repair, and the component that had failed was a capacitor. So check out that video down in the description. So of course on this channel we're always going to check out some of the power numbers for devices. So we can see over here that this device is using about 11.1 .1 watts. This is just on and doing nothing right now. So it's got an idle power consumption of 11.1, .1, which is 
fairly high. This does have a mechanical switch on it, so when you turn this off, it's fully disconnected. So it will draw zero watts, or it will draw this 11 watts. Again, this is not producing any audio. All right, the power factor on this unit is 0.7, roughly, and this is mostly due to the transformer that's stepping down the 120 volts to the lower voltage that the actual amplifier is using inside the speaker. So when we look at the THD, I bet we'll see that the THD is actually fairly low. Yeah, so it's not great, but it's about 40%. So it's different from a switching power supply, which would have a much higher THD, but then we would also see that the idle power consumption would be much lower. So let's go ahead and put some load on these things and see how high this power number goes. All right, so it looks like we saw about 25, 26 watts out of that under the highest condition, and the power factor actually came up a little bit. So remember, this is using a class AB amplifier, and it's also using a transformer to step the voltage down. So it's a little bit old school technology, but it's very reliable. Um, in this case, they had to fail with the cheaper capacitors, but with just some very inexpensive components, we were able to bring these back to life, and now they work great, they're loud, they sound good. We're saving some money and we're saving the environment by reusing these speakers. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments or if you've had a similar experience with your speakers. Okay, so we're here. The loudspeakers are all repaired. They're working. They're doing everything they need to do. And for the cost of just two basic capacitors and a little bit of time, we were able to take these non-functional loudspeakers that buzzed and were unusable to a loudspeaker that's perfectly fine, functional, and now going to be used every day to edit videos. All right, thanks for watching, and bye.